Good morning, everybody. This is Paul. I'm with ProShop. Uh, let me just wait, wait another second or two to let a couple other folks join. We have a good group today. Uh, a couple housekeeping items before we get started. There is a Q&A uh, little button that uh, where you can ask questions. And there's also a chat tool, but I would encourage you to use the the, uh, the Q&A area for answering questions, and we'll get to those at the end. But um, there's also a chat, and sometimes people like to use the chat, which is totally fine as well. Um, can I? Can someone actually just maybe in the chat uh, just confirm that you can hear me okay and that the that the audio level is fine? That would be great if someone could and would do that for me. Audio great. All right, thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Very good. All right. Well, it is 9:01, so let's go ahead and get started here. Um, so I'm going to share my video just for this first little intro when I say hi. Um, and then we're gonna turn it off. So good morning, everybody. My name is Paul Van Meter. I am one of the founders of ProShop, and I appreciate your time today. Uh, we are gonna have a fun session. We're gonna go over a little bit of what ProShop is like, uh, the, what it's used for. It's very different than a lot of systems out there on the market. We're gonna talk about a little bit of the history of where ProShop was developed in the machine shop that uh, I started with my partners. Uh, we're gonna talk about the summary of our modules and some of the key features and functionality that makes ProShop different than a lot of other systems on the market. Uh, we'll have developed, we'll talk about some of our integrations, uh, some of the results that clients have seen after switching with ProShop. Uh, we'll talk about some of the details about how ProShop is delivered to clients, whether it's cloud hosted or on-premise, uh, talk about working with us in the implementation process, and then some Q&A at the end. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my video uh, and we can focus on the screen stuff. All right, so, um, and I presume you all are seeing my screen with the sort of agenda there. If that's, if you're not, please let me know. But, um, all right, let's get going here. So let's jump to the next, um, actually, uh, yeah. So let's, yeah, before we get started, um, let's, I'm gonna show you a quick little video um, just while I talk about uh, what it's like using ProShop. So to set the stage, uh, companies using ProShop uh, run a very, very differently than shops that are using a traditional ERP software. Um, and it's very different than, than people think of if they're coming from a prior experience. First of all, there's generally speaking no paper out on the shop floor or even in the office for the most part. There's not a process within our system that requires printing paper. Employees are using ProShop out at their machines, using tablets or laptops or, or PCs um, to access all their work instructions, their inspection reports, um, their cutting tool lists, all the things that they need to do their jobs. Uh, Tribal's knowledge is essentially eliminated in ProShop because it's all in there, all easy to access, only the latest revisions available. And everyone knows what they're supposed to be working on. They're not running around looking for lost job travelers because that's a thing of the past. Um, and they're really just focused in on throughput and getting products shipped out the door. So it's been pretty awesome for us to see the things that our clients do uh, when they implement ProShop and of course, pretty darn fun for them as well. So, all right, let's um, switch back over to my little presentation here and we'll give you a little bit of the history of uh, ProShop. So I'll start a little further back than the software company. So back in 1997, my partners and I graduated from college. Uh, we went through an engineering program that was very hands-on, and we got to design and build cars like the one you see on the left-hand side there. I can't imagine having a more fun college experience, basically in the shop or in the class or the lab every day, learning about stuff and then taking that in and taking it out into the shop and making things. So every year we would design and build a car and then compete against other universities. So it was a very intensive and amazing learning experience. And the team that we worked on really enjoyed working together and we decided we didn't want to go off and get separate jobs. So we decided we would start a company together, a machine shop in fact. And uh, one of my partners was a little older, thankfully he owned a house and he had enough equity to take out a second mortgage on that house. 
and that was enough money to buy a Haas VF4, a manual mill and a lathe, and have a few months of rent left over. So we opened our doors in September of 97, and then went and started knocking on doors looking for business. And thankfully, we found some. That would have been pretty, the story would be pretty short if we hadn't, but uh, <laughs> thankfully we did. Uh, and we started getting busy, we hired some more people, we bought some more machines, and we started to grow. And we developed eventually into a company that did not only machining, but complex engineering, design work, and assemblies, and, um, and did some pretty fun, amazing stuff. So over the course of the time that we were growing, we started to outgrow the Excel-based uh, spreadsheet system that we had homegrown from day one. Uh, we were using QuickBooks for our accounting, and we were using Excel just for managing all of our jobs and our orders and purchasing and stuff. And we quickly started to outgrow that, um, as you might imagine. So about three years in, in 2000, we had about a dozen employees, and we were really looking for something uh, better than, than what we had built. So we started doing research, probably just like many of you are today. And we had demos of various systems, some of the most widely used systems out there, which I'm sure you are probably aware of and maybe even are using yourselves. And we were really disappointed and sort of underwhelmed by what they were showing us. Um, keep in mind, we were pretty much straight out of college. We didn't even know what ERP software was at the time. And uh, so, but we knew what we had to do as a, as a job shop. You know, we needed to manage our orders. We needed to, out on the shop floor, we needed to manage our, our work instructions, our inspection requirements, first article reports, cutting tools, um, fixturing, all those kinds of things, and all these systems didn't do any of that. Um, they said, no, you need to just do that separately. We don't really handle that side of things. So we decided rather than buying one of the systems and still having to uh, have lots of spreadsheets around, we decided to hire a software developer and just develop something for ourselves, really just out of need. So uh, it eventually named, became named to be uh, called ProShop, probably because our machine shop was called Pro CNC. Um, anyway, so we started developing it in 2000 and, and it just, we just kind of kept our nose to the grindstone and kept growing and kept building this system. So over the next several years, we grew a lot, some years more than others, some years almost 100%, some years not nearly as much, as <laughs> you can see from the graph there. Um, we got ISO certified a few years later. We got AS9100 certified a couple years after that, 2006, um, and started getting a little more heavily into aerospace, um, as the AS might indicate. In 2008, uh, our largest machine shop customer approached us and asked us to sell ProShop to them. Uh, the gentleman you see on the right, I don't know if you've watched his video, it's on our website under our video library and, and customer page. Um, he was the he was the production manager at our customer South Aero Marine, and uh, he actually came and worked for us on the weekends for a period of time to earn some extra money. And uh, he used ProShop to help us with setups and running parts. And he went back to the owners of his company and he said, "You've got to see this system; it is crazy." So they approached us. Um, they were using an old system called DBA at the time, just a you know old sort of DOS based, I think, even um, traditional ERP MRP system. Um, and after implementing ProShop, uh, they saw some pretty remarkable results. And you can see on the left-hand side here some of the, some of the results they got. They, they, had, they were a company of about 35 people at the time, and they freed up um, about three full-time um, overhead staff, which is about 20% of their overhead reduction. Um, that was two expediters and a full-time planner that they just didn't need anymore. So they had them do other jobs that were more value added. Um, they perpetually had a late order list of, you know, I think about six pages um, that they just never could get on top of. They met every single day for an hour trying to figure out how to get those hottest jobs out the door that day. Um, and within a month or two of putting ProShop in, that was dramatically reduced down to about a half a dozen items. Um, and just primarily because of really long uh, lead times for outside processes. And they actually stopped having their production meetings every single day, um, and their planning throughput went out the, through, through the roof, and they had a really, really positive ROI, both with the labor savings they saw, as well as the additional throughput um, out on the shop floor. So that was encouraging, and, and they, 
we're so happy they started referring us to some other shops. We did it a couple more times. And then we, uh, at some point uh, in there, decided to sell our shop and go into the software business full time. So here's a snapshot of what ProCNC looked like at the time that we sold it. Um, it was a great company. We really miss it, but we're having a heck of a good time uh, working with shops like, your guy, like you guys um, today and really taking um, what we had built and extending it to other customers as well. And we've seen crazy growth over the last few years since we implemented or since we rolled out a website. So we started selling ProShop in 2016, actually. And, and in, this, in this graph, the yellow bar is 2016. Um, so that's when we turned on a website and started actually selling it. Um, at the time, we had about four or five customers when we sold the company. Um, and then it's just exploded since then. So we're having a good time. So I wanted to take for a moment, just talk about what the big picture is with ProShop. Like what is it actually designed to do that's different than other ERP systems that are out on the market? So we do some of the things we do are very similar and some of the things we do are very different. So let's talk about a couple things. Uh, ProShop is certainly designed to manage uh, your sales, your sales reporting, your job costing and profitability. So we can see pages like this, like on our sales dashboard, where we can see the total you know, uh, purchase orders that we've received from customers over the last many months, the value of all of our shipments going out, uh, the value of orders that are due coming up into the future. Uh, and then we can see uh, a, on the bottom here, a rolling list of job profitability reports. So as jobs ship out of the system, we automatically calculate the job profit and display it right on a dashboard um, with all the relevant summaries. And then you can click onto these little dollar sign icons to go drill into the details of those jobs. ProShop is definitely designed to manage the whole shop floor operations. What jobs are where, who's working on them, how is it going, are they hitting time targets, are they over time budget, um, you know, uh, compared to both the estimated targets, compared to the shop targets. Um, so a lot of just sort of up to the up to the minute, up to the hour kind of reporting kind of things. Because we're capturing all that time data of people working on jobs and working on equipment, we are also collating that and reporting out uh, what we call value added numbers per employee. So we can look at a given employee and see, you know, in that in that week time frame, how much they were at work, how much they tracked against any kind of time tracking, and what that percentage was how much of that was against work orders and what that percentage was and, and whether that hits their personal time target. On their user profile page, you can identify and set a target for them. Um, so for example, Robert here is not hitting his target of 80% in that week. So that's why that, that number is red. Uh, and then while they're working on jobs, we can report how effective they are at hitting the time targets that were set. And in this case, Owen was about 88% effective at hitting the time targets for all the jobs he worked on in this one week period. So you can do lots of information, uh, lots of things with that information. Um, next, we can take that same kind of data and collate it into a bigger company, sort of 50,000 foot view, and say, what are we, what, what does our company work on, right? How, do, how much of our time do we spend running parts or doing setups or doing planning or programming or inspections? And we can see all the data for the current week, month, and the last many months, all these are live numbers, so we can click on any of the links that are in blue and go look at all the raw details of who's doing what and what they're doing and how they're, how they're hitting targets or not. Um, ProShop is definitely designed to manage the work queue at every single machine or every single workstation. So, um, you know, what is it that's coming up next? What's ready to work on right now? You know, uh, these these icons will indicate whether the material is here, whether the tools are here, whether the bomb items are all available, um, and, and various statuses that we can also see. And of course, we can see a picture, so it's nice and visual. And typically, people will just click on the job that's at the top of their queue, and that's what they're gonna be working on next. We also display this in more of a sort of Gantt chart style, um, and we can look at individual work cells and see what's on the machine right now, when is it expected to end, when it's coming up after that, and all the jobs sort of down the line. And then we're comparing those jobs and those times with when jobs need to ship out and when they're due. So these yellow and red bars indicate when jobs have to leave the facility 
either to go to the customer or very likely to an outside process. And you see this one here in this light shade of red, AKA pink, um, which is running after the date it's supposed to ship out, which is why that's red. So we give some visual warnings about that. ProShop is absolutely designed to manage the quality, the entire quality of the whole company, whether it's the QMS at the highest level for your ISO and AS9100 documents and business processes, um, all the way down to the on the shop floor inspection where people are doing their first articles, they're doing their in-process inspections, they're creating non-conformance reports if they have a part that's bad, and ProShop is aggregating that data. You can report it, you can see trends, you can see what's your biggest you know, tent pole, what are the biggest failures that you're having over the last week or the last months or the last year. Um, and we can, of course, track and manage all the, all the details about that. ProShop is designed to replace any kind of paper job traveler packets. Um, we replace those with basically labels or tags to physically identify the jobs, but um, we don't wanna have these paper documents floating around that could get lost, could be obsolete, could need revision changes if, if an order changes, and instead we embed all that work instruction detail, photos, videos, text, attachments, right into ProShop, so only the latest revisions are available and they can never get lost. And it's very easy to augment those. So shop employees could grab a camera or their phone and take a picture of a setup and add that into ProShop very quickly. So they can, so you know, the chance of losing something and then having to reinvent the wheel or only a certain employee knows about how a job runs and if they leave or they're out, then someone else is scrambling to pick up the pieces. So that's a little bit of, uh, presentation, let's actually go dive in and look at uh, some things about ProShop and the actual uh, details. So let me switch to my web browser and um, hopefully that's now switched on your screen, what you're seeing. Um, all right, so here is ProShop. ProShop is a browser-based system, which means a couple different things. It means that we can uh, provide it hosted on the cloud, which is how ProShop is generally delivered. Um, we host on AWS servers. We can, uh, you can be sitting on just a normal AWS server in, in various regions around the country. Um, and we also just recently started supporting the AWS GovCloud for companies that, that uh, need to have that sort of ITAR you know, compliant hosting as well. But we also provide the, the option for clients to host fully on premise. Um, and when they do, we just basically host a local cloud inside their company and users still just use a web browser to access it. There's no uh, need to install software anywhere. It is just a, um, just using the browser exclusively. And ProShop has been web-based from day one. We're not, you know, a, a sort of installed, installed software that's kind of been hybridized to, to work in the browser. Um, I, I was recently looking at a system that is supposedly browser-based. Um, it wasn't originally, and this guy, this customer that just switched was showing me how he can't even use the back button uh, because that'll give him an error because it's not actually web-based or browser-based. So anyway, so uh, here on my home screen, uh, just give you a little bit of the layout. I have a couple of my panes expanded. I can collapse or expand these. So here, for example, here's all my time tracking information. I can see when I clocked in this morning. Um, that was using my sort of clock punch interface. So people can clock in or out, they can submit a missed punch. Uh, those automatically go for review. And then people in the, in the office can administer all that and then post those out, export them into some clock punch uh, payroll system like QuickBooks or something else. But as an employee, I can see what I'm doing today, what jobs I'm working on, uh, my starting and end times and try to get my numbers you know, good where I'm working on jobs as much as I should be. Um, I can also, I've set up a bunch of quick shortcuts down the left-hand side. So this is a, I call it sort of an ugly but highly functional launching point to get into exactly what I need to do very quickly and easily. Um, so for example, I could you know, go look at the most recent part records I've been, I've been working on, uh, choose one and click go and jump straight into that without having to browse through a bunch of menus and navigate over there. Um, across the top, I can always get back to my home screen by clicking this button. I can jump into any of our modules by, uh, by coming in here, 
or like I said, if I have them as a shortcut, I can jump straight into those modules also just by clicking these links. Over on the right-hand side of my menu bar, uh, I can see my inbox. ProShop has an internal messaging system that allows employees to communicate with each other, kind of like email, but it's not email. It's built within ProShop and it's thread-based. So you can see sort of responses and replies um, all in line with each other with respective hyperlinks and, and attachments and things like that. And we'll touch on that in just a little bit. And then ProShop also sends out lots of automated alerts. Actually, let's go ahead and just jump over there right now. So for example, the system agent one, anything from the system agent um, is something that ProShop sent out automatically. So, uh, so yesterday afternoon, someone made an NCR. Uh, they were working on this work order. It's for that part right there. Uh, and I got notified since I'm one of the folks that's supposed to get notifications about NCRs. So I can just click on that link, come straight into that NCR record. I can see what they were working on, what they said happened, how many parts there were. And so if I'm in the quality department, I can come over and provide support and help them, you know, do disposition or put that into MRB or whatever needs to happen next. Um, it's also used, like I said, for, uh, for communication between employees. So uh, yesterday I also sent uh, something to to uh, Cindy, Kenny, and Lori, uh, and, and I included a link to this page. So um, they can click on that link themselves, go see exactly what I was talking about at the time I sent the message. You know, maybe I have a question about this particular out of spec dimension on this first article um, and, uh, or something to that effect. And if they replied to me, uh, we would all see that reply and we could sort of have this conversation here. All right, so back here on the home screen, um, there's also, you can set any kind of custom links and shortcuts that you want. You can access all of your different dashboards. ProShop has uh, a couple of dozen different dashboards for different types of uh, people that work in different roles. So like the one I showed you at the beginning, the sales dashboard, um, finance, purchasing, inspection, inventory control, shipping and receiving, project assignment, customer service, and then some of the more um, things like value added numbers I mentioned, work by industry, non-conformance, breakdown delivery and profitability calculations, um, lots, of, lots of other dashboards, there's, there's a whole ton of them. We don't have time today to get into all those. Um, anyway, so, so that's, that's that. Um, and then lastly on the menu bar over here, this is where I can track my time, do clock punching, set my preferences and do other few other things as well. So let's, let's jump into um, just a few key details, sort of key functionality, and then we're gonna drive into just a very brief workflow of how ProShop actually does things. So ProShop is designed, of course, to estimate all new opportunities that are coming into the, into the company. Um, or if you're an OEM making your own products, you can, you can still develop your estimates to help figure out you know, your pricing and costing. We can convert those straight into quotes uh, very easily that can be sent to the customer. Uh, and then if the customer orders those, we can convert those straight into customer POs with just a click of a button. So very quick, easy uh, workflow. And then ultimately, once those jobs are done and, and shipped, we will generate invoices. And as I mentioned earlier with our, um, well, actually, maybe I didn't mention it, with, with, um, with things like QuickBooks, um, we can sync those invoices uh, or vendor bills uh, straight over into an accounting system. So ProShop does not have a complete general ledger system built in. Um, we have designed and built integrations with any version of QuickBooks, including the online version, um, as well as Sage 50, both the previously known as Simply versions or Peachtree versions, um, to do the sort of general ledger functions, the AR, AP, and financial statements. Um, but ProShop does sort of all the rest of the uh, job costing, whip and inventory calculations and generating these documents. Of course, if you then, uh, you know, you win something you've estimated, we're going to convert that into the parts module and then track the work orders as, um, as they go through the shop. Uh, we're going to manage our contacts in here. So if we go take a look, for example, at a customer, uh, in the contact module, we can see uh, right at the top here, shortcuts to almost any kind of relevant record for that company. So I could look at the profitability for this customer with a single click, the delivery on time delivery performance, 
any open customer POs or, 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 or even old historical POs, packing slips, quotes, estimates, work orders, and parts. Um, we can see all their shipping addresses, the list of employees and all their contact information. We can see uh, when they finished or, or did our, completed our client satisfaction surveys for our ISO and AS metrics. Uh, we can see any corrective actions they've issued to us. These will automatically show up here. So we can see those. On the left-hand side here, we can see particular shipping requirements and preferences, you know, on-time delivery window, packaging instructions, lead times, and all of these settings are gonna drive specific behaviors for this customer's jobs. We can see all their billing information. And then this area is particularly important. This is where we can define all the paperwork and quality requirements because ProShop does a great job of, of automating document prep, uh, pulling all the certs together, preparing first article reports automatically based on these preferences um, for this customer's jobs. So just a little bit about context there. Um, uh, vendor POs, of course, we'll, maybe we'll have time to get into that. ProShop has a really cool system of issuing vendor purchase orders using a purchasing dashboard where we actually use a shopping cart system where you can actually take uh, all, you know, a bunch of active work orders, put them all into a shopping cart. ProShop will analyze the bombs for material and cutting tools and all those kinds of things and then aggregate those by vendor and then we can very quickly issue purchase orders to all those vendors for those common items we buy from them. Uh, and then of course at the end when we receive bills from them, we can book those into ProShop and then sync those over to the accounting system. Uh, packing slips are not too terribly exciting, but uh, we do that certainly. Cutting tools are a little bit unique, so let's go take a look here. Uh, so ProShop, for companies that do machining, which is not a requirement, we have lots of customers that are not machine shops, but uh, the majority of them are, um, we have the ability to manage basically the entire tool crib. What tools you currently have in your system, what are all the parameters and cutting, de cutting details for, for programmers to know which tools they have available to them, what, ben what vendors we buy them from, how many we currently have, have demand for, uh, how many are currently in use, and this will even show us which machines these tools are loaded into at the moment. So ProShop does also manage the movement of tools from inventory out into tool caddies and then into machines and then back out again. Um, and then of course, I mentioned demand. Uh, we can easily see all the jobs that have demand for any particular tool, and we feed that into our purchasing system. The tools can also be assembled into things called RTAs, which is a rotating tool assembly. So you can have specific tool holder uh, extension lengths that ProShop can manage. And we'll even uh, integrate in with offline tool presetters. So we can really streamline the setup of jobs, make sure all the tools are not only here in advance, prepped in their holders, touched off the right length, and ready to load into machines really fast and seamlessly. Uh, so that's tooling COTS module. Uh, this stands for commercial off the shelf. This is a, um, an inventory system for purchased items. So things that you're not making yourself on a work order, but you're just buying them from a vendor and they may go into an assembly. Maybe they're, you know, a maintenance item, MRO type thing, but um, primarily, you know, product that you're going to assemble into, into something you're making. So just like the tooling module, we can uh, have lots of detailed specs about it. This one happens to be a fastener, which is why we have all these different parameters that we can search and, and enter. Um, we of course have our picture right here, which is handy. We can have multiple vendors and their prices and lead times, and even we can put in multiple sort of price breaks, which will feed right into our estimating module if we're quoting an assembly and, and perhaps we're not gonna need to pay as much if we buy a thousand of these as if we buy 50 of them. So that'll seamlessly roll up right into assembly, into estimating. And then just like the tooling module, we'll also forecast all the demand based on all the work orders that are in your system. Um, purchase orders you have on order that haven't been received yet. So we really track the coming and going of all those types of tools um, and, and items. And then if, as they come into the company, we're gonna track um, both the inbound you know, purchases and then the outbound consumption. And we, will man and we will track all the certs related. So when you buy something that requires traceability, that cert will be scanned right at receiving. And then those, uh, those will be automatically linked to any work orders that consume these items. Um, so 
that uh, can dramatically speed up the pre preparation of document packages in the final inspection. Um, our work cells uh, module allows us to track and keep, keep manage all of the diff different machines we have in the company. So here, for example, there's a, uh, there's a Mazak mill. We have all the details about this. We can see currently which tools are in it. This is one of the things I was mentioning earlier, uh, including you know, tool length offsets if you do offline presetting. And uh, so we, again, track the movement of those. Um, we also have a few other links, including what we call our shift tie-in system. So you can see, uh, if, you, if you run multiple shifts, we can see what jobs um, are you know, currently running. So if you're switching between night shift and day shift where they don't actually have an opportunity to talk with each other, um, very seamlessly launch a shift tie-in, leave some notes, and, uh, and the, next, uh, the next person can just click straight onto that job and go see what, uh, and keep running, keep running the job. Uh, we also do our scheduling based on the work cell module. So if we wanna go take a look at the schedule here, we can organize our machines into different departments. Uh, those machines can then be obviously scheduled. So these schedules are based on, you know, what work orders we have and the machines that are used on those work orders. And we'll, we'll touch on that in just a few minutes here. But we can see what's currently on the, job, on the machine right now, what's coming up after that, I showed you this in the slideshow at the very beginning, but here's a, a live version of this. Um, we can even combine jobs, what we call run together, so you can optimize all your setups. And then like I showed you before with the, highlight, the highlighted backgrounds here, this job is red because it's currently scheduled not to finish until the 16th, but it actually needs to leave by the 13th. So we are a little bit behind schedule. This job is not late yet. Um, but uh, we probably need to do something about it. So there are things we can do, um, like we can book some, some time which might be unavailable right now. So for example, uh, these colored stripes are when we have a scheduled working shift. You can fully define that for every work center. But, and these white spaces are when we don't have a shift. So for example, if I wanted to book a night shift tonight, I could just click on that white space, click book, and click update. That then pulls that night shift in. So now I have a, a full night shift. And look what happened. This job is no longer red. This job is now yellow because we are now going to finish right on the day it needs to ship out to go to outside processing. And then this job, if I scroll over, is actually due to the customer on the 29th. And we have you know, ample time to get all that processing done without having to expedite it. So just an example. Uh, and then the other detail is the work order that is currently on the, on the machine right now, uh, the amount of time remaining uh, on this schedule bar is gonna be fed directly based on the time tracking activity and the actual progress that the shop floor employees are achieving. So we can see that of the 45 pieces that are due on this work order, 35 have been finished, and that is why that bar is the length that it is. It started out much longer, but as parts were made, the bar automatically shortened. So it makes the maintenance of the schedule much easier. You don't need to worry about um, going and updating it you know, manually. It automatically updates. Um, uh, let's see, equipment, just briefly here. Equipment is used for any kind of devices, machinery, equipment, gauges that are on any kind of schedule at all whether it is preventative maintenance, like the one you see here, or whether it is calibration of a caliper or a micrometer or your CMM. So you can define any kind of equipment in any kind of group, uh, put in all the relevant details about that, and then define all the different schedules that it's on. What has to happen? What are all the details and work instructions? We can even issue work orders for this preventative maintenance um, and put those into the schedule. We can see who's responsible for these. In this case, we have a shop assistant responsible for changing the batteries. Currently, Brian, Owen, and Chris are all shop assistants. So those folks will be able to see that maintenance and get the reminders that that's supposed to happen. We can see when it happened last, how long it's supposed to take, um, and what the frequency is, and any kind of resources, bomb items, you know, videos, attachments, photos of how you actually perform that service. Um, even in the case of bomb items, this will feed into our COTS module and ProShop will automatically decrement that when the performance, oh, thank you Windows, um, 
when those maintenance items are performed and even update the inventory automatically so we can make sure we never run out of those. And that will feed right into purchasing. So when, it, when it's not due for a while, it's still green. When it's coming up soon, it's yellow, and that's when it starts reminding people. And if it goes past due, then it turns red. Um, and then let's just show you how it works um, on calibration. So here, for example, is a caliper. We can see this caliper right here. It has its serial number. And we calibrate it using this task. So this task is feeding into our task module. So we're getting a little bit into the QMS side of things here. Um, we can see which employees have the training to do that, um, what sections of the AS9100 standard we meet by doing measurement traceability and calibration. We can see the archive index of old revisions of this. And we can see, of course, the current latest revision of how we're doing calibration. But back here on this, on this gauge, you know, it only has a single schedule, and that's to calibrate it. I can go look at the complete history of every time that, cal that calibration has been performed. Um, and I can also click on the link right here to, in this case, a gauge block set that we use to do the calibration of that caliper. It's on its own set of schedules, including sending it out to a third party because we can't actually calibrate that part ourselves. That's, that's where the NIST traceability comes in. So if we click on the history of this one, I can see the full history of that. And if I click on the link, I can see the, the most recent or any of the certs that we have that we received from that third party house, including that NIST traceable statement. So essentially, as we're walking the floor with anybody, including an auditor, we can show them NIST traceability from an iPad, for example, for any piece of equipment they grab and want you to want you to show them that. Um, all right, let's continue down here, the fixture module. Pretty basic, but certainly very useful. You can design fixture ID numbers, say where you store them in your fixture catalog storage system. ProShop will automatically tag which part numbers they're made from, because um, you typically make a fixture from the part module or work order module. Um, and we can see even what active jobs might need to use this fixture coming up. And just makes, and we even have an automated recycling function where it'll remind you every year or so for any fixtures you haven't used in the prior year. Um, so you can check with your customers, see if they need to order those again or not. And if, if they don't, you can clear out, put them into archive or get rid of them. And then the last section um, in here is really the, all the QMS functions. So I'm not gonna dive too deep into this. I'll show you one little workflow, but ProShop has all the modules needed to manage an ISO 9000 uh, and one, 1345 um, API or AS9100 type quality system. Um, from the manual, procedures, tasks, training, auditing, standards, documents, and then the actual records. And this is where I'll show you a little bit of a workflow where we can go actually from a work order. So if I was on a work order that a customer needed to return some parts on, um, just from this little button, I can just spawn an RMA. I could also spawn a few other types of records, but I'm gonna spawn an RMA in this case. Um, that automatically creates the RMA. You can put in what the authorized quantity is for return. All these kinds of fields get time, date, user stamps, so you know exactly who, who initiated that, date and time they did. Um, we can put in any notes, and then when they actually arrive, uh, we can give the customer this RMA number for the package. When they actually arrive, we'll receive it. Again, time, date stamped. Um, we have the ability to then do dispositioning, you know, just some fine responsibility, the requested accounting. Um, and in this case, add photos, of course. In this case, we had these parts got scratched, so we didn't package them well enough. It was definitely our fault. So in this case, we're going to issue an NCR. So again, click on that little plus button, click an NCR right here, and that will automatically pull all this metadata right, the part number, the customer, their PO number, the work order, the rev, all those things, pull it straight into the NCR. We can now see all that stuff right here. We can actually go into detail about what the nonconformance was. Uh, any, we can assign it to people. If we have serial numbers, we can assign the serial numbers that are rejected. Um, process improvement suggestions, dispositions, including rework and cost. Um, but in this case, we're gonna issue a corrective action because we sent bad product to a customer, which is not okay. Um, if we click this, that'll 
pull right into, pull again, all this metadata over and link into our corrective action module. So um, again, work order, part number, client, NCR, we can assign it to the QA manager. We can then have a full workflow of direct and root cause, immediate and corrective actions. When will it be implemented? When will you follow up? You know, all these kinds of things are all linked together. And then to even close the loop to make sure we don't have this happen again in the future, I can go straight into the part module and go right into our shipping operation if I want to, right down here, operation 2010. Um, and I can then add photos, put detailed text, and this will be presented to anyone doing shipping of this work order, this part number in the future. So they'll see the, they'll see the pictures, they'll see the text. We very likely would even put this foam box on the bomb so it automatically gets ordered. Um, and if we want to get really serious about it, we can even define an inspection requirement that someone needs to verify the packaging was correct with a checkbox saying, yes, I did this properly, or even add a, an image, add file, where they add a picture of the parts being packaged properly. And that will just automatically happen if we put it here on the part module. All right. Um, oh, last, certainly not least, is our work orders module, I'm sorry, the users module and company positions. So we can define, um, basically define the whole org chart. We can see how all the training of all of our employees uh, overlays onto the org chart. Um, so we can see who's trained in what, what, who's fully trained, who needs more training, and we can drill into those, see all the job descriptions, the individual people. Uh, we can see all the training requirements to be in those roles and the minimum proficiencies needed. And if I even want to look this into more of like a, um, like a matrix, I can pull up the training queue and very visually it will show me which employees have the training, which employees still need any training or need more training if they have some but not enough. So that all rolls up together to the top level um, sort of company view. So it's really easy to show auditors you're doing your training, you're staying on top of it, um, and people know uh, how they're supposed to do their jobs. All right, let's, with just maybe five, 10 minutes, we're gonna be a little pressed for time today. I'm being a little bit more verbose today than normal. Um, just very quickly go through a typical workflow from estimating through order. Um, so if we go into an estimate here, for example, we can again see the client and the rev level and the part numbers and the materials and the outside processes. And these allow us to put in a great level of detail. Uh, we recommend using templates to start these estimates. So it's very fast and easy to just start with something that's similar and make a few tweaks and additions to it. We can link in our vendors quotes um, and then we can define the whole workflow, all the different quantities that we're quoting with all the prices of material and outside process and cutting tools and bomb items, um, terms and conditions. We even can link this right into our, our, our file system. Uh, ProShop does a lot of file management, creating of folders, storing of documents, drawings, you know, all those kinds of things. We do that. Um, we can then create a quote off of this. That quote will be added to the top of this table. This is a quoting history. Um, and we can click on any of these quotes, go see our quote page with our logo, with our quality policy, all of our, our, you know, our customer's information, uh, the items we're quoting with the lead times and the prices and the, everything, those terms and conditions I mentioned. Quote ID number will be added automatically. And then if the customer decides to order this, we can convert this directly into a customer PO just by clicking that button right there. So that feeds right into our customer PO module. Um, often known as sales orders and other systems. And then we have a full detailed contract review process, which is designed to be compliant to the AS9100 standard or other standards like that. Uh, you can attach files. We can then launch and spawn our work orders off from here and then very quickly get that out onto the shop floor. I'm gonna back up and click here on the part. So. One of the things that we also do, as I mentioned before, when we win an estimate, we convert it to the part module. The part module becomes sort of the master record of what the latest drawing revision is, right? If I click here, we can pull up the drawing that ProShop helped us get approved and pushed into the system, stored in a file folder, and then displayed right in the browser, and then available to any work orders that are running that rev. We can design, um, of course, all the workflows. 
with all the times for setup, inspection, and running. Um, and ProShop even has the ability to have multiple routing methods for any given part number. So whether you have different manufacturing methods or sometimes you build to order, sometimes you build to stock, um, all super seamless to switch between and, and configure your work orders for based on those routing methods. These operations are also where we will define things inside of those, like our inspection plan. Like these are the, the dimensions that we need to check at operation 60 of this part number, right? So all these are gonna be on our first article. Only some of these are gonna be checked in process at a certain inspection frequency. We can even add reference pictures of how you're supposed to check that item, right? So it makes it very easy for an employee to get up to speed doing that quality checking the way you want them to. Um, and this will be executed on the first article and in process inspection pages on, a, on an actual work order. Um, inside of here, this is also where we can do things like define all the cutting tools and what holders they're in and what tool life we expect. And this is what feeds right into our purchasing modules for any work orders that you get. Of course, this level of detail is not always warranted. If you're doing a very quick prototype job, then by all means, leave this stuff out. Just make a quick work order, make the job, ship it, you know, make some money on it. Um, this level of detail is not a requirement. Some people sometimes look at what I'm showing them and are like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of work. Um, it's not necessary if you don't need it. But if you do, if you have a, a repeat job, a job you wanna make sure you dial in the process and it runs flawlessly every time, or as flawlessly as a shop ever can be, um, then this is where it's relevant to put in this kind of detail. Um, it can almost always be relevant to put in some photos and some quick little screen grabs from your cam system. That really helps even on a prototype job for someone to, to know what's supposed to be happening and it's extremely quick to do that. Anyway, once you're um, once you uh, have all that, your all your engineering dialed in, then we have all of our work orders, right? This is a, a complete history of all the times I've ever made this part. Um, I can click on any of these work orders, go see what actually happened. I can pull up the material certs, all my cutting tools, my outside processing. Um, right here is a summary of what I bought. There's the actual cert, so I can click on that. Boom, right there, that's the cert that got scanned in during the receiving process and automatically linked into this job. I can, of course, go see, again, all my inspection reports. I can see the whole first article for the entire part. And even if I'm in aerospace, for example, I can view that in the AS9102 version, right? ProShop will automatically format it this way if that's the preference for that particular customer from their contact page, like I showed you at the very beginning. Once the job is, is done um, and we can see all the sign-offs, all the sign-offs are digital. If we mouse over any of these, we get a time date stamp of when that work was done. Um, we can see the summary of all the labor tracking. I showed you this a little bit earlier on one of those dashboards. So we did pretty well on this job. We were about 4% over our time budget. I'll take that any day. Um, and then we can look and see how that translated into profitability. That seems unrealistic that we made 97%, but of course this is a demo system. <laughs> it's not a real, real system. Um, so, but it will show you the actual net profit with all your cost of goods, direct and indirect overhead costs and roll that up. ProShop will also um, uh, pull in uh, for assemblies. So if we were looking at an assembly, ProShop would show us the full rolled up profitability of the entire assembly. Um, and I just do wanna show you here the final inspection process. So if I click into our final inspection operation, you can see these print options are predefined. If I click print here, this is where it pulls in all those certs. So there is the material cert, there's a hardware, or an anodizing cert. Um, uh, there's the copy of the bubble drawing. And then there's that AS9802 report fully formatted, even signed already. Um, pulling in all the details from various modules, including our purchasing module and our parts module and the work orders module, time tracking, inspection, well, I guess maybe not time tracking, but certainly inspection, there's all the actual inspection results. Um, and this is ready to copy into a folder or print off and I can then send this off to my customer. And ProShop will warn us if there's any certs that it's missing that it's expecting to find. So we don't accidentally send an incomplete package. All right, well that was a little bit of a whirlwind there. Um, let's jump back over uh, onto our 
presentation. Oh, let me go back into this. All right. Uh, some of our integrations. So we have a, a basic integration with Mastercam um, where we can share tool geometry data into your Mastercam program. Uh, the SOLIDWORKS PDM one actually is still in development, but we're basically going to be displaying the contents of the PDM vault right in ProShop if you click on a, a link. So that'll be handy to tie those together. I mentioned earlier we do have integrations with QuickBooks and Sage for doing all the, the accounting side of things. Um, HiQA um, is a, a great partner of ours. They make the world's best automatic ballooning software. Um, and then extracting all the OCR, creating an inspection plan, and we can import those inspection plans right into ProShop. So, um, so if you have that requirement to balloon your drawings and it's very manual, or you're using another system that isn't quite as fast or accurate as you like, we totally recommend these guys. Uh, if you're in aerospace and you have the requirements to report net inspect, uh, first articles, uh, ProShop can format your first articles into the XML format that, that NetInspect needs. So that's quick and easy. Uh, let's look some client results. Um, I would encourage you guys to go watch some of our videos. We're posting lots of customer testimonial videos on our library and on our customer page, but it's not at all uncommon for customers to see an actual increase in revenue shipped um, with the same number of people, same number of machines, just because they're getting so much more dialed in on the shop floor. They're, they're, they're increasing their spindle utilization. They're having jobs or not, you know, scramble at the last minute for, for setups because they don't have the right tools or gauges. You know, we can really help to manage all that. So, you know, seeing increases in revenue like this are not uncommon at all. Um, obviously, going from a paper base to a digital system can make uh, the lead times way faster for things like contract review. So we've seen customers go from, you know, a few day lead time to just, you know, an hour or two before a shop, shop jobs can be out on the shop floor. Um, because we have a full QMS, custom, lots of customers are using ProShop to get AS9100 audited or ISO certified many of the times with no findings at all. We get the feedback time and time again that auditors are just blown away by ProShop. It makes the auditing process excuse me, incredibly fast and simple. Um, anyway, so uh, another increasing overall company throughput, like I mentioned earlier, just you know, greater spindle utilization, more focus on actually making parts rather than pushing paper and, and chasing things around. A uh, customer reported to us that they, they were mostly a piece part manufacturer before, but they really had now the level of confidence to take on complex assemblies and they felt like they had all the tools to, to manage those successfully. So they started um, quoting more, uh, you know, more complex jobs, winning those jobs. Those jobs have greater margins because there's fewer shops that can do them. So another um, nice success there. And then this one is similar to the, so a couple of the other ones before, but basically just eliminating downtime on machines. Um, because you're just way more on top of things in advance and those jobs get their setups go smoother and you keep your, keep your spindles turning. Uh, a few things about delivery details. There's a, there's three different options for how ProShop is delivered. We have our full cloud option, which I mentioned can be on a normal AWS server or on the AWS gov cloud for those ITAR or FedRAMP customers. Um, the hybrid cloud where we're, where ProShop database is on the cloud where the file storage is local. And then a uh, full on-premise where everything is on-premise. That can even be behind an air gap. We have customers that run ProShop completely disconnected to the internet. Um, and uh, that works great. Um, the way we do our licensing is different than most systems. Our licenses are based on named users. There's nothing to do with concurrency, nothing to do with locations. Um, think of it like a Gmail account, right? You can, once you have an account, it's your account, it's to your name, your password. Um, you can log into it from anywhere, um, but it's, a, it's pretty important, excuse me, um, that every employee have a user license in ProShop. So even the shop floor employees, because they're accessing all, accessing all that digital data, there's really no paper anymore. Um, now we have different types of user licenses. We have shop employees, office, and administrators. So um, there's that option. Those, those things are to consider. Um, and then as far as how, how companies purchase or pay for ProShop, um, we, the, 
the by far most popular is our subscription. It's an annual subscription just for the number of users you need. And that can still be on-premise. So we don't, we don't tell you if you do subscription, it has to be on the cloud. So that, that's unusual, but we like to offer that. And then there's obviously the purchase option where you own the licenses outright uh, forever, and then you can pay maintenance to stay current on the latest versions. Um, what is it like working with us? Uh, we're extremely customer focused. Uh, we are always building new features. We, the biggest department in our company is our, is our uh, developer department. Um, there's about 24 of us now, I think, in the company. Um, and I think about seven or eight of them are developers. Um, so always building new features, always pushing the edge um, on, on growing our system, making it better and better all the time. It's really important to us that the customer be a good fit. We do not take every, every company that wants to use ProShop. Sometimes it's just not a good fit. So we will make that determination with you. We want you to provide to, to get the system that works best for you. And sometimes going fully paperless is not for everybody. Um, when we do determine it's a good fit, we do data migration, configuration. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a very well-structured remote training system in ProShop. Um, you get a dedicated trainer that works with you, holds your hand through the whole process. Uh, at the end, we typically do come on site then. There's, uh, and that process, by the way, takes about 60 to 90 days, uh, sometimes a little longer, sometimes a little less. Um, our very fastest customer ever is 30 days start to finish. That was pretty awesome, but that was a small shop that was super aggressive and they needed to get up and running because their subscription was running out of their old system. Uh, we do have an extensive help system, lots of video tutorials, and, and we continue to hold customer um, webinars every month, so there's always continuous learning happening. Um, and that's our information. If you want to reach out for more information, we'll certainly provide a video for this uh, session to all of you, uh, either it's later today or tomorrow. Uh, so you can share that with coworkers or watch it again. Um, but uh, I'd love to open the floor for just a couple of questions. Again, I went a little long today, so, um, and I do unfortunately have a, a hard stop with another demo uh, in about three or four minutes. So any questions whatsoever about anything? I'm, I know I didn't uh, cover all of it under the sun, but uh, if there is any, anyone that has a question, feels, feel free to throw it out there. Uh, if there are none, then that'll uh, make it easy. And again, we'll follow up with, with email. Can this integrate to Dell Tech? Hey, John. Um, we are building an API right now. Um, uh, so it's certainly conceivable. You know, we built the integrations to QuickBooks and Sage. Uh, we could build a custom integration to Dell Tech. I have little doubt. Um, our new API is, um, is being built, which should be able to extend their ability to customize an integration for many other systems without having to be super custom. So uh, it really depends on which, which data you want to push over. And so I, I, will be, I will definitely be reaching out and continuing the conversation with, with you guys on that Dell Tech specifically. So thank you for that. Uh, you're welcome. Um, all right. Well, unless there's any other coming in, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up right on time here. Um, again, I encourage you to go watch some of our our, um, let me just get rid of this. Um, go watch some of our videos on our website. Um, there's a whole bunch of them here in our video library. We have a few different tabs for um, just general videos, customer testimonials. We're adding more to these. In fact, we're going to add three or four more in the next few weeks. Um, some of these are just super awesome. We're really excited to have these. And, uh, and we also would very happily, uh, share contact information for, for any of these companies who'd be happy to talk to you directly. Um, we really have passionate customers, which we love deeply and uh, we have a great, great partnership with them. So, all right, well, doesn't look like there's any more questions. So thank you all very much for joining me today. I uh, appreciate the time you spent with me and, um, and uh, have a great rest of your day and we'll hope to talk to you soon. Take care.